Uh, we'd like to introduce the, uh, the chairman of our group, Amani Advisors, today's uh, organizer. Uh, many of you will already know Dr. Mohammed Daud Bakr is an uh, internationally uh, reputed sh Sharia scholar, as well as the founder and chairman of our group, Amani Advisors. A few technical glitches this morning. But in any case, uh, Dr. Daud, as, you, as many will know, is the uh, chairman of the Sharia Committee of the uh, Central Bank of Malaysia, as well as the Securities Commission. And uh, if you could join me just now in welcoming uh, Dr. Mohammed Daud Bakr. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa bihi nasta'in ala umuru dunya wa ad-din. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen. Sayyidina Muhammad Khatim al-Anbiya wa mursaleen. Amma ba'd. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Distinguished speakers and audience, let me... Uh, let me again t take this opportunity to welcome everyone to uh, the first Muscat International Islamic Finance Forum. Uh, as we are embarking on the second day, there will be some series of discussion on various topics which might be uh, interest to uh, all of you, inshallah. Uh, my presentation this morning will be a kind of an overview uh, of how we look Islamic finance from both uh, legal sharia and real economic activities because there have been many uh, comments and many uh, concerns by some parts of the community that is that finance is not real, it's still artificial and does not relate to the real economic activities which I'm trying to put some argument to suggest otherwise. Um, so basically I'm trying to put some guiding principle, some concrete example and some strategies moving forward. Um, basically, as you know, in textbook of uh, economy in the Western world, in the commercial world, they started by saying that the resources are uh, limited, but the wants and the desires are not limited, so that we have to be a bit uh, shrewd in our managing the resources of the world. In Islamic perspective, in Islamic economic perspective, uh, is on the other way around because resources are given by the creator and resources should be enough to support the needs of the people, the mankind, but the wants and the desires should be limited, should be refined so that we can have an equitable uh, living uh, among mankind throughout the ages. However, in summit perspective, these resources are depleting and they should be replaced should be uh, you know, uh, create enhanced to make sure that the resources are well managed and everyone in this mankind, whoever he is, wherever he is, should be able to benefit from the divine bounties or resources from the creator. So it's about management of resources and pet management of the lifestyle and the attitudes of human mankind. When it comes to financing, uh, we have to look from two perspectives. Some of the uh, companies, individual, they are self-funded, able to fund their own projects, but some of them, perhaps most of them, need external funding. So the, the issue of funding and financing will come in, and we have to see how is that finance helps in putting the intermediation between those who have and those who do not have enough money to support themselves and perhaps support their projects, uh, activities. And this is a very crucial slide uh, for my presentation because it is about the perception of money. Because uh, again, if we go back to all textbook on economy, they would give this definition. Uh, money is basically a medium of exchange, uh, store of value, and unit of measurement upon which you use to buy and sell goods and services in the community. It doesn't matter whether the money in the form of gold, silver, aluminum, or skin of animal, a shell, a stone, it doesn't matter because the money has no value by itself. It reflects the medium to exchange and to buy and sell goods and services. So money has no value basically. 
ladies and gentlemen. So you may leave behind your money for me to collect if you like. Uh, but we need the money basically to, you know, to facilitate the transaction in real economic world. But somehow in practice, since 15th century of AD uh, in Europe, this has been changed from, uh, you know, being the currency, being the medium to become, to becoming a commodity. Money has a value, and when you lend out the money, you expect the money to grow by itself. In Islamic perspective, you may grow your money by taking some risk, by putting the money into real economic activities like trading, leasing. You buy at one dollar, you sell at one dollar and twenty cent. You buy at one dollar, you lease for five years, you amortize, and the profit will be another one dollar after five years with the restored value. You can sell for capital gain. So this is the real economic activities that is not available in the lending and borrowing environment. And um, on this score, uh, the Quran has mentioned clearly in Al-Baqarah 275, uh, I, I think you are aware of that, uh, that Allah has made uh, uh, trading lawful and riba unlawful. So this is the, the cardinal principle of moving away from financial, as it is to financial coupled with real economic activities. Because for you to do the trading, you have to engage in real economic activities. That's why in banking and finance, we don't lend people to buy the house. You buy the house and you sell to your customer, or you buy the house and you list to your customer on the option to buy back or to buy the commodity at the end of the day, under Ijara, Sumal Bayah, and so on and so forth. So this is the very uh, interesting uh, uh, Sharia principle of the function of money. In fact, Al Qurtubi, in his uh, Al Jami' Al Ahkam Al Quran, the most comprehensive tafsir on the Quran, has explained why Allah has mentioned Al Bayah instead of investment, instead of leasing, instead of what have you, because Al Bayah as a term in Arabic is so powerful. Because Al Bayah or a sale or trading will be the ultimate decision. When you have the manufacturing, you have to sell your products. When you have services, you have to sell your services. So sale is the ultimate economic at the end of the day. Because whatever you do, you have to sell for you to get the income. So the sale, or al-bayah, would encompass all investment transactions. You set up a, a company and you IPO your shares because you wanted to produce more products, more services, and to sell and to get the uh, the capital to get the gain and to be distributed as dividend to your shareholders. But the ultimate way of getting that is through sale. So you may refer to Al Qurtubi if you like to understand more the, the the social dimension of sale. And in fact, as we speak today, we have not developed uh, the most comprehensive sale environment for state banking and finance, and perhaps in the capital market as well. Uh, if I can conclude this slide by saying that pure lending, basically you simply lend out and you know, charge the interest or any derivative like CDS and some other synthetic product in the uh, Western world, which are the cause of the collapse of the giant of the giant, they are basically no asset base, basically. They are not backed by any asset as they are. They are very much uh, based on the idea that the money has a value and the money should grow, and if there's no gro growth to the money, then there's no asset to back this kind of uh, activities. Okay, this is a slide to, again, to rebut some of the argument that we have heard in the past. Inside banking is not real. They are paperwork. They are just, uh, you know, the lip service, if you like, and some other comment which I which no need for me to go into detail, but you look at the current market practices. If it's a banking finance, it's not real. There's no amendment, there's no need to amend the law to allow the banks to buy and sell, buy and lease, and enter into investment activities. But any bank cannot operate until we amend the law. 
either in UAE, in Malaysia, in UK, in Singapore, Hong Kong, in Oman, we have to amend the law to allow the bank to buy and sell, which is a new departure from lending and borrowing. So if a bank is a real from that perspective. And taxation, when you sell, so when you buy and sell, in some countries they have capital gain, they have VAT, they have property gains tax. In Turkey, for example, it's still a problem at the moment. When you buy and sell, you have to pay the tax on the capital gain. So it's real. Though we have some problem to resolve to make it uh, naturalized and on, on standing, on footing, on equal standing footing, whatever it is, it, it shows that it's a real transaction. When it comes to disclosure requirement, it is more robust and more rigid because you have to disclose the asset you are buying and selling, the asset you are buying and leasing, the shares you are buying to get the capital gain and whatnot. So it's more of extra requirement to be more uh, of disclosure regime, which is higher than conventional banking system. And this is very important because some were saying that it's a banking very close to you know money laundering and terrorism funding. It's not because it's, Sharia will require a more transparent and robust disclosure because you have to know the other counterparties, you have to know the uh, the asset that you are buying and selling to, to avoid any horror, if you like, in the transaction, uncertainty in the transaction. Of course, supported by legal documentation, which is different set of documentation whatsoever to reflect the real transaction. We have many uh, court cases in England, in our own country, in UAE, in Malaysia, plenty of them. The court cases reflect this is not a lending, this is a sale transaction, uh, they are sale transaction or leasing and whatnot. And the court, uh, I mean, unfortunate or fortunately, they have to look the cases from different perspective, not lending anymore, but from Musharaka perspective, Mubaraba perspective, sale Muraba, and so on and so forth. You can refer to the uh, law reports on many, many uh, cases in the past 30 years. Accounting risk management, different profile altogether, on balance sheet, off balance sheet, and this reflects the very distinctive feature of St. Banking when it comes to accounting treatment and risk management in terms of capital adequacy ratio. For example, you go for lease financing uh, under the normal Basel II, you have to provide for the loan 8% of your capital, but if you go for leasing financing, you have to provide 14% under the FSA in England, for example. For banks uh, operating out of England, they have to provide higher capital charge for their capital real, you know, uh, uh, I mean, distinctive feature on the ground. Okay. In brief, before I conclude my presentation, some proposed strategies to reinforce. Though we have a set of products and services which are real and uh, tangible and they relate to real economy, we, can, we should have more uh, strategies to make it more real so that the community can see that we are different from the other conventional banks and finance services uh, that we, we have uh, nowadays. I think we have the Mubaraba account, which is very much protected by the central bank to, uh, to protect the interest of the normal depositor. That's fine for retail depositor in the market, but we should be able to create another investment account to allow sophisticated investors putting their money to the bank for the bank to invest in real economic activities without having the capital charge under Basel II and without having the capital protected scheme under insurance deposit scheme because this is a pure investment and not a liability to the bank because they are on a balance sheet of the bank. We have not seen, except few banks are having this kind of special investment account in Mubaraba or Wakala Bit Istismar and so on and so forth. So, the more we have, the better to show that the banks are managing the money from, of the client for real economic investment and activities. Peral Mubaraba, in brief, I don't want to take uh, much longer. The bank can take the money and invest in other entities as the second manager. Al Mubarib, Yudarib in Arabic term, the bank becoming the second manager. So they will pass the money to the real manager to manage the, the fund for their customer. The bank should also set up their own asset management to manage uh, the fund from sophisticated investors who are taking the risk higher than the normal depositor. In Japan, for example, they have uh, 
allowed uh, Japanese bank to set up its banking window under subsidiaries because they will allow the subsidies to go buy and sell leasing because this is not permissible under the normal banking law, but they will allow banks in Japan in April this year, uh, yeah, this year to, to set up the subsidiary to allow them to start buying and selling, not under the parent company, but under the subsidiary company. Real economy activities from sale and lease and whatever perspective. Tier one capital enhanced, as you know, um, under Basel III, uh, applicable to everyone, you have to have more capital for the banks. You have the equity shareholder. You have also the bond, for example, and the tier two. But in between, there are many, many tiers. One of them called tier one capital. It's, not, it's neither equity nor a debt. And, uh, but if we take the precedent before the, uh, the equity of the shareholders in the case of liquidation of the bank. And we have seen one, the Sukuk, being issued out of UAE which is based on pure Sukuk Mudaraba, where the Sukuk investor will take the risk of the bank. If the bank is on, you know, underwater, then they have to uh, you know, uh, let go of their capital because though they are not shareholders, they are treated as equivalent to the shareholders of the bank. So this is a real venture that the Sukuk holders are taking by putting their money to the bank. Uh, is this now and forward lease and this is again very micro product which I don't think I have the time to go into detail uh, understand the, the, the construction of the new airport in Medina is using the last uh, structure which is is this now and Wakala where the bank can be involved in real uh, construction business by appointing the contractor to become the agent to manage the construction of the airport and that can be duplicated here and everywhere without changing that much of the legal requirement. And perhaps the, the last one, which is a very powerful uh, proposition, is that the bank can come in into any value chain in the society and try to be involved in the real economic activities in the supply of coal, oil and gas, airtime, aviation rights. So there are many other assets which are in the, in, in the place where the bank can come in between and try to make some money by funding the SME, the ultimate buyer, and so on and so forth. This is a very powerful uh, proposition that I've seen in many parts of the world, in Asia, in Middle East, in North Africa, but uh, banking are a bit reluctant, but perhaps through education and understanding the risk involved, we should be involved um, more aggressively um, in this area. So thank you very much for your kind listening. Hope the presentation has given some uh, overview to show that ESM banking is a real, it's not artificial, but we have to move on to make it more related to real economic activities. With that, thank you very much and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.